right guys so today we are going to install our green belt um, I call it a green belt because there are more than one manufacturer actually there is only one manufacturer uh, but two different companies carry the belt so today I have my 10 rib green belt now the the Mazda is a six rib so what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna cut this down to a six rib so we can fit this on our supercharger um and uh so one thing to note like a i was gonna tell you like gates makes the hd fleet runner belt right but they also supply to ac delco so uh, me what i did was since i know it's the same part um i just searched gates the the gate size i needed um and it's gonna have like uh, the hd behind the number so regardless if it's a gates or ac delco if it's the green the green belt it'll have hd behind it so what i did was i searched you know the correct length and then once i found the correct length there was only the correct length in a 10 rib and then i decided okay well i guess i gotta cut the 10 rib down to a six um so like i said ac delco gets their belts from gates so it didn't matter if it was it said ac delco or gates i just went with the cheapest one um i got this particular belt for 17 dollars off of amazon they're normally around 40 uh, but i looked around found a deal so um if you get it it's exactly the same the only thing that's different is uh on the belt i think it's branded and it says uh actually it says gates on it which is crazy even though it says ac delco it's a Gates green belt fleet runner. So that was interesting. I didn't look at it until just now. Um, so yeah, Gates makes a uh, AC Delco belt. So they're exactly the same. All right. So now that we got that all, you know, that's all understood. Um, also, if you do have the standard pulley, there actually is a six rib that a fit fit. So because I have the smaller pulley, um, there wasn't a six rib that fit, so I had to get another belt that was going to be the correct size. So if you have the, um, the standard size pulley on your supercharger, that's the, uh, 2.5 liter, you can buy the, the, there's a six rib. I'm going to link it in the description that you can buy. Um, you don't have to get the exact one. If you find it cheaper somewhere else, get that one, but you can get a six rib and the length of 1539 millimeters, which the belt that comes with, um, the VT kits, they're either going to be a 1535 or a 1538. Um, I've tried the 1539 and it works just fine, but you will get more tension on the belt. Um, that's not a bad thing. So um, I want to go over why I'm getting, I'm using the green belt. Um, apparently these are more reinforced. They stretch less. So as we go up to RPM, the belt start to stretch out. Um, and I guess that's when a lot of the slip is happening with this green belt because it reinforces for, you know, heavy duty equipment, um, it has less stretch. So as I'm going up in RPM, there shouldn't be significant belt slipped. So what I want to also do is show you, um, it looks exactly on the inside, it looks exactly the same as the regular standard gaze belt It's just the outside band is uh, more reinforced. So I don't think there's a, too much of a difference on the inside because it looks exactly the same. Cause I have multiple gates, gates belts right in front of me. Um, and when I'm looking at them, they don't look any different on the inside. Exactly the same, 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 no difference. Um, both with the same kind of grip texture. So now another thing that I noticed, so I think the inside of it is exactly the same. It's just the outside band is more reinforced. They're the same thickness. So I don't really have to worry about that. Like I compared them side by side, they're the same thickness. Now one thing, uh, so I took off my original 1539 belt that I had and one thing I noticed is the uh, the grooves have been chewed out. Like, so when I first put the belt on there, actually when I first put any of the belts on there, I'll notice excess um, rubber being like just shredded everywhere all in the car. And I don't think that's because of misalignment. That's just because how the the supercharger pulley is um, is made. It starts to eat at the uh, the rubber just because of how the teeth are on it. So if you look on like, you know, just a regular belt, how it's flat. Now, this is another belt that has about 5,000 miles on it. You'll notice, I don't know if you can pick it up on there, but the grooves, they've been shaped. So like there's a, 
a design to it so there's not it's not flat anymore it's like pointed which is like less surface area but it's like molded to fit exactly on the pulley but there's like less surface area for like maybe my standard um stuff to pull uh to grip onto and i was thinking i was like okay well what if it's the other pulleys doing this to the belt so what i did was i found my my stock belt before the supercharger was on there and i looked at it and see they're perfectly flat so it's definitely the supercharger that's adding this shape to it so these are flat so you get good surface area and as whereas you look at this it's not flat and they're like pointed like pyramids now like the, the triangle tip so that's definitely due to the the supercharger the smaller supercharger pulley um it's kind of crazy how it came from a flat shape to now it's a pointed triangle shape so like i said i don't know if you can see it but it is definitely not the same anymore it looks at the bottom it's like the same width but that's about it all right so now that that's been you know established that my supercharger is eating the belt hopefully it doesn't happen so much on this one but it's the same texture so it might happen the only thing that i'm really going for is less stretch all right so what i'm going to do is um i have to count six ribs which means i'm not counting the the in-between grooves i'm counting the six solid pieces i need to count six of those and then once i get to the outside of the sixth one i'm going to cut and we're going to have us a six rib 15 35 millimeter belt so that's what i'm going to do here guys so make sure you do it from the inside i mean it's just the most logical way to do it so you can make sure you're not cutting into anything all right so i'm gonna go ahead and cut six i'm gonna let's see which side do i want to cut i mean it's exactly the same but if i'm gonna cut something off i want to be able to read the the fleet runner so i'm gonna cut i'm gonna use this side i'm gonna count six from there so we got one two three four six seven eight i'm gonna cut off these last four i'll be back guys so I kind of slightly sliced one of the ribs, but I already know it's gonna form that triangle pattern. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, but that is unfortunate that I slightly sliced one of the ribs. So guys, turn it inside out like this. That way you can watch the ribs to make sure you're not going through them. All right, there you have it. I have me a six rib now and I nicked it in one spot. I might smooth it out or I'll just let the I'll let the supercharger do that since it already does that to some of my belts it's not the most perfectly straight I'm going to scrape off a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and install this guys alright guys I had some technical difficulties um, because you know early on when I used to install this I uh, actually kind of stripped the uh, the 17 millimeter used to open up the belt so yeah you know I stripped that and I ended up, you know, not being able to, because his belt's so much tighter. Um, because his belt is so much tighter, it doesn't stretch as much. So I wasn't able to get the leverage I needed because I had uh, stripped that nut from the top. So I had to go through the bottom to get the whole thing on. And as you can see, this belt has the same thing going on where the it's ridged now. Um, and this is my other 1535. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car up with the uh, new belt. And, you know, I was in such a rush because it was so cold out here. I actually broke this little mount here. But now I can take it on and off, which I really have no need to now because I got to go through underneath the car. So I broke this little thing for my windshield wiper. I'm going to just put a zip tie there. Hopefully somebody here, um, not hopefully, but if someone has like a, a car that's totaled, I can get that off of them. So that's loose. I'm going to put a zip tie there, but there's my green belt, guys. I'm going to start the car up, and it should be, it should be quiet. Ugh. guys now that the belt's broken in um everything's working just like i wanted it to when i initially installed the belt 
um, there was a squeaking noise and I was worried about that. Um, but because, you know, like the belt is stiffer, um, I was expecting the squeaking because the belt's going to be a little bit tighter than the standard Gates belt. But after the break-in period where, you know, I was telling you how the the pulley from the compressor reshapes the ribs on the uh, the belt, the squeaking went away after about two or three drives. Um, so after a couple hundred miles, if you have a little bit of squeaking just at idle, don't worry about it. It'll go away. Um, so now that I, you know, actually made sure it was working and the belt didn't snap from my experiment, even though I'm not the first person to do this on the supercharger kit, uh, this is not a new practice. This has been done for years. You can go look on forums. Guys have been doing this. So it's not something revolutionary that I'm doing. So all these guys are like, oh no, your belt's going to snap. Okay, cool. Keep a spare belt in your trunk. If your belt snaps, guess what, guys? The motor is not going to blow up. You're going to lose boost pressure. Um, I don't know about you guys, but a lean condition is way worse than running rich because you're not getting enough air. So it's not like you're going to like, I mean, yes, cool. You're getting extra fuel in there, but like you'll, you'll know if your belt snaps, you'll hear it. Okay, guys. So um, this is just kind of a response because I, I posted this earlier um, and there's always somebody that's going to say something negative, which is fine. But I'm putting my face out there, guys, because I want to see this community grow. And, you know, I'm willing to take the risk to be ridiculed because at the end of the day, my car is improving and I've made a lot of mistakes. But, you know, if you guys try this stuff, it's at your own risk. You know, the car, you lose your warranty, all this other stuff. We're all doing stuff to our cars that are not to improve the longevity of it. We're here for power. We want to make it, you know, faster, but still reliable. Um, but there's a balance. You know, I'm willing to take certain risks to get that little bit of extra power. So it is what it is, guys. So and, you know, people are like, oh, the belt's fraying. Guys, I have a dozen belts. They come from the factory frayed. It's not really frayed. There's just stitching on the side of it. And the way the belt sits on our pulley system, there's a gap on both sides. So it won't catch. If your pulley's aligned, the belt will not catch on anything. So the fraying won't increase. Unless you cut the belt wrong, which is really hard to do, guys. So let me show you, because I have a whole bunch of brand new belts here. And the fraying that they saw in my picture is not actually fraying. It's just... It's just the belt, all right? So, first of all, um, this belt was never ran. This was the one that VT gave me um, that came with the kit. It was the wrong size belt. They gave me the one that was going, that was supposed to be with the 2.0 kit. So, this is a, um, a 1480 belt, right? So, this is what comes with the 2.0 liter kits is a 1480. Um, the guy who actually, in our group that originally, he was the first one to get the HD belt, he's running a... Um, of 1483 in the HD, but he did have to cut like an eight rib to get it to fit. He found the closest size he, uh, he could in length to what VT recommended. And he and he it came out to a, a 1483, which they supply a 1480, which is probably the smallest you can go without the belt squeaking. Um, because at a certain point, the tensioner will squeak if it's too compressed. Now, for me, once it's smaller than a 1535, I'll get squeaking. And that's usually been the case. VT has found the limits of the OEM tensioners. So once you go past the limit of the OEM tensioner, you will get belt squeak because the tension isn't right um, for the system. So, but, you know, uh, I experimented, guys. I've got like a dozen belts here with me. So I'm going to put all the links for the different size belts you need for 2.0 and 2.5T. Some of these belts you don't have to cut is all based on if you got the smaller pulley or the standard pulley. So some of you guys who are not trying to take that risk, it doesn't matter. You can run a HD six rib and we have one that you don't have to cut. But I want to go as small as possible because the smaller the serpentine belt, um, the less chance of stretch. You know, so you want to go as short as you can. And also as stiff as you can, because that's going to ensure more boost and less slippage. So there are there is a brand of RPM belts, but we can't get one. And it's been out of stock and there's been issues with them snapping because you you want it stiff. But once it's too stiff, it becomes brittle. All right. So it snaps instead of stretching when there's too much load. So I'm going to list all the the belts that are available. 
you know, um, it's like, so for my 2.5 liter, between 520 millimeters and 500 and, or not 520, between 1520 millimeters and 1539 millimeters, that's the range at which the belt functions properly, right? But, um, depending on if you have an OEM tensioner or an aftermarket tensioner, with the OEM tensioner, 1535 seems to be the limit. With aftermarket, there's guys running 1520 millimeters and 1533 millimeters. I tried a, I tried a 1520 and a 1533, and it squeaked on both, not just at idle all the time. I mean, maybe on a 1533, it would have went away after break-in, but... Um, the guys who had the aftermarket tensioners, they had no squeak from the beginning to end. So it's all based off what tensioner you have. Some are better than the others. So I can't tell you what side is going to work for you, but it, I would go with the safe side. If you have the OEM tensioner, go a little bit longer so you don't get the squeak. Aftermarket tensioner, guys, you can try shorter because the shorter is better. And I wish I could run the 1520, uh, 1520 right now, but I'm not going to pay for another uh, tensioner right now until mine goes out, which it probably won't. So I'm cool with the 1535. All right. So let me just show you the belts. So like I said, this is a 1480. Came with the, the kit. They accidentally sent me the wrong size and it was too short. I never ran the car with this, but look at this. You see all this? Oh my God, but guess what? This this doesn't even meet any either side of the pulley system because there is a gap on both sides. The ridges are lined up. See, like, see, look at it, it's flat. Didn't even use this belt. So for people out there, oh, it's frayed, the belt's gonna snap. What is it gonna catch on? Have you guys actually changed the belt? I mean, I've been with the supercharger for a while and the other guys have had it even longer than me. So like I said, guys, do it at your own risk. Here's another brand new belt. That fraying there, see, is just the stitching on the side. That is nothing, guys. That's nothing. So don't worry about it. Um, but like I said, do it at your own risk. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm happy with the results. So I'm wait. I'm I'm pretty much ready to do another dyno. I've been spending a little bit too much money. There's a, a couple more parts I want to do. I have a few more mods to do. And then, guys, I'm gonna show you, you know, all the my, you know, f ups. So I did do, I tried to do a fuel pump mod, didn't work out. So I had to buy a brand new fuel pump. I'm out here just doing a thing, man. I'm just, you know, if it works, I'll let you guys know. If it doesn't work, I'll tell you, don't try it. Okay. So that's all for today. Um, yeah. So Greenbelt guys, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, I just want what works best for the car guys. So have a great day. And if you're still looking for the kit guys, um, look in the description, join our group chat. We'll get you all taken care of. That way you don't have to go and have a shop install it because we can help you. All right, guys, that's all.